All right, so in looking at um, stress concentrations, the stress concentration factor K uh, and stress transformations, we've been trying to find ways that we can identify where local stresses are going to reach their maximum, um, whether that's normal stresses or shear stresses. Um, and this is our last lecture on that group of, of topics. Uh, and in this lecture, we're going to cover Moore's circle, which is a graphical way of finding and understanding uh, stress transformations. Okay, so like I said, this is going to provide a visualization for stress transformation. And here's an example of, uh, of Moore's circle. So what does this mean? <laughs> and, and how do we get there? Uh, well, we get there by taking our transformation equations that we used, had in a uh, couple lectures ago and manipulating them until we get this. And if you want to see how we get here, um, you can check out the textbook and it'll, it goes through the steps about how we get there. But what's important to us is that this gets us to a situation in which this equation is in uh, the form of a circle. Okay. So here's a standard circle equation. H here and K are the coordinates of our of our uh, the center of our circle, and R is our radius. So our circle is going to be centered at theta average and zero, because theta average is H and zero is K, uh, and it's going to have a radius of length R, which if you look over here and see how R is defined you may recognize that that's the equation for maximum uh, in plane shear stress. And so we have a circle centered here at theta average zero uh, with a radius r. And that's what this picture is. The geometry of the plot that we draw in here depends on a state of stress. Okay, so our center is at theta average zero. Um, and then a given state of stress is at point A. And that point A might be anywhere, but the y-axis here is our shear stress. And notice that positive shear is downward. So that's the only tricky thing there. And then the x-axis is uh, normal stress. Okay. So if, say, a we know the state of stress um, at one place, we can actually plot, we know theta average, so we can find C, and then we know A because we know our shear stress uh, and our normal stress in the X direction, and so we put A on our plot. Then we can draw a circle, right? If we have our center of our circle and a point on it, we can draw that circle. And we also know the radius of the circle. So given normal information, the normal stress in the x direction, normal stress in the y direction, and the shear stress of an in-plane stress, we can draw this circle. Okay, we don't need to know, we don't need to do any calculations, any significant calculations, uh, in order to draw the circle. Now we know point A represents our current state of stress. Um, the length of C represents our maximum in shear stress. Uh, and we can find that just using the Pythagorean theorem, right? We could solve it this way, uh, but we could also just find the length between C and A. Once we have the plot drawn for that state of stress, every point on the circle of the circumference of the circle represents a description of this state of stress using a different coordinate system. Okay. So if I rotate um, my orientation of my coordinate system by theta, I'm going to take CA here and I'm going to rotate it to theta, right? So say I, uh, change my orientation by five degrees, right? I would rotate CA here by 10 degrees and I would find point P and that would give me my new state of stress, my new description of the state of stress. I would have uh, 
a shear stress defined in the y direction, a normal stress defined in the x direction, and then to find, so that would be theta x, then to find theta y, I could use my um, equation for average stress uh, and find theta y. Now, we could do that just to find another random point on the circle. More often, we're going to be interested in just visualizing that, those shear stresses, those maximum normal stresses, right, our principal stresses and our principal planes. So if I wanted, my principal plane is represented by this, CB, and by CD. So if I wanted to figure out how much I wanted to change my orientation um, in order to find that maximum, then I would say, okay, that rotation is going to be 2 theta P to get me there. And then I would know what theta P was. I would know um, how much I needed to change my orientation to get to those principal axes. I would also be able to calculate my principal stresses here um, and here. So you can see that's going to be my maximum stress. This is going to be my minimum stress. Um, and if I wanted to know my rotation to get to my maximum in-plane shear stress, I could figure out what it would take to get CA to be up and down, either here at CE or here at CF. Okay, so each point on the circle represents a state of stress. Generally, we're going to be interested in what does it take to get me here and what does it take to get me here, my maximum uh, stress and my minimum stress. R has already given me my maximum in-plane shear stress. So let's do a real quick example here. We have a cylindrical element under a torsional load here. So we're twisting this uh, and it's um, attached to a surface here, to a support. And we find that our state of stress right here on the outside of our, um, our rod here, uh, we have a compressive stress in this direction um, no normal stress in the y direction uh, and a shear stress of 6 um, ksi in the negative 6 ksi, right? Because it's going in the clockwise direction on the x face. So let's use more circles. So get a sheet of paper out and see if you can sketch this. So we're going to start by creating a plot. So draw your coordinate systems right, your x and your y axis, and remember that your shear is going to be positive downward. Now we want to place the center at theta average, or sigma average rather, and zero. So what's our sigma average? Keep your signs in mind, right? We have a zero for sigma y, we have a negative 12 for sigma x, and so we can place our center on our coordinate system. Then we can place the known point on our system, right, where we have a, a point at um, negative 6 shear, right, and remember positive is downward on shear, and negative 12 on sigma x. Uh, that is on our x-axis here. So we're going to have a point at negative 12 and negative 6. So now we know C and A. Draw the line between C and A. That's your radius. And then roughly draw a circle formed by that C and A. C is going to be the center of our circle. Uh, and then that radius will tell you how to draw your circle. So here's our attempt at that, and hopefully yours looked a little bit like this, right? Our average stress is negative 6. Uh, A is at negative 12 sigma x and negative 6 shear. Remember, positive shear is downward. So here's A, and then that allows us to draw our circle. So just drawing that circle tells us, okay, what's my... Um, 
my minim my minimum stress and what's my maximum stress well it's going to be about what 14 15 right if this is 12 that looks like 14 or 15 and then over here it's going to be what two three four something like that okay so we already know what our maximum and minimum normal stresses are and we have a good sense of what our maximum in plane shear stress is right it's going to be you know more than six um, you know what seven eight nine something like that so go ahead and let's do some of the math here so find the maximum in plane shear stress so this is equivalent to the length of our radius so pause solve that put it in Moodle and then come back and we're back uh, now we want to know what, how much we have to rotate this to find our principal planes. Okay, so one of our principal planes is going to be at CD. So how much do we have to rotate CA to get to CD? Uh, and then remember that it's a rotation of two theta. Okay, so what is theta P1 if um, if two theta p1 uh, rotates enough to get make this line horizontal, go ahead and pause while you solve that. All right, we're back, and now the last one here. Uh, the coordinate at the first principal plane gives us a minimum normal stress. Um, which is going to be at point D. What is that minimum normal stress here? You can just solve this using geometry. And pause again. And then just to make sure that we understand how that worked, right? We found R here because I know the side of this triangle is 6. I know the side of this triangle is 6, right? 12 minus 6, and I can solve for the length. So that's my um, maximum in plane shear stress is 8.49 KSI. If I rotate that here, then I'm adding this line to this line. So it's just this guy plus that guy, negative 8.9. Um, plus negative 6 gives me a, a minimum stress of negative 14.5. I had to rotate this. This is a 45 degree angle, right? Because I've got 6 and 6. Um, I have to rotate it 45 degrees, but that's 2 times the principal angle, right? So my theta is half of that 45, uh, and I've got a rotation of 22.5. So when I rotate my element here by 22.5 degrees, I get my maximum or actually my minimum principal stress, right? Uh, which is a compressive stress of 14.5 KSI. Maximum is represented by point B, right? Which is negative six plus 8.49. On my principal planes, that's going to be my uh, force in the y direction, my stress in the y direction. That's positive here, so it's tensile. Okay, so it's expansive in that direction. And then, as we said, my maximum in-place shear stress is uh, that is 8.49, and that would be 45 degrees different from this. So a rotation of negative 22. 0.5 would bring me to this line, right? If I moved it that way, I'd get here. Or I could move it all the way down here, which would be a rotation of, what, 67.5 from here down to there. What does this tell us? Like, this is just like we did last time. It tells us where things are going to fail first, right? What we have to plan for. Uh, and so I would have a compressive stress of 14.5 KSI. Um, that's going to be my biggest problem. Um, 
if we're if the failure uh, stresses are all similar in all these different directions um, my maximum tensile stress would be relatively small uh, and then my maximum shear stress would be 8.5 ksi and that's how we use Moore's circle